Well, this doesn't look like skin, does it? What is this structure? Oh, come on. I'll edit it out if you're wrong. What's that? Looks like a node. A node. It is. It's a lymph node, right? It's a blue round structure. And when you go closer, you can see that it's made of lymphocytes in sheets here. And well, maybe not sheets. I'm sure a hematopathologist would chide me for saying that in a very organized way and a nice germinal center formation there. So this is a lymph node. Good. And it's got a fibrous capsule around the outside. And usually you can see a subcapsular a little sinusoid there, which is another clue to help you know that you're dealing with a real lymph node rather than like reactive lymphoid tissue. So here, see that fibrous capsule, subcapsular space that's called a sinusoid, and then the, the lymph nodes inside that. So this lymph node, and I know you guys don't see lymph nodes really ever probably, but um, this is not normal. These structures right here do not belong, okay? The rest of the lymph node to me looks like a big reactive lymph node. Again, I'm not a hematopathologist, but what are these structures? And I think you know these because you can see these in skin too. Uh, another stellate abscess. Absolutely. And this, these big granuloma with a big abscess of neutrophils in the middle. And you already mentioned earlier, you guys mentioned what the differential is for this. Particularly when we see this in lymph nodes, uh, one thing to think of is... Anyone know? Scratch. Yeah, cat scratch specifically. This is like, a, I'm sure it could be other uh, organisms could cause this, but to me, like the, the only times I've seen this in a lymph node, it ended up being cat scratch disease. So I feel like it's very distinct. These like the, the granulomas packed full of tons of neutrophils in lymph nodes going to really be a strong indicator for cat scratch. And you can um, supposedly see the organisms on, uh, I think, Worth and Starry or, or Steiner or Silverstein. Um, again, I find those really difficult to interpret. Um, you can do molecular uh, to, to prove, and, you know, Bartonella hensley being the usual causative organism, although I think I think maybe rarely Bartonella quintana can can cause it. If I feel like I've read that before, but Bartonella hensley is the most common cause. And you can sometimes see this in the skin itself, particularly like at the site of a cat scratch, like an infected cat that scratches someone, they may get the swollen node, but also they may get some granulomatous response like this in the skin. And I, I believe some people have called that Bartonella inoculosis or Bartonella inoculation site changes, that it's like getting that same response right where the cat scratch um, occurred. And I've seen a case of this actually where it uh, clinically that the lymph node was so large they thought it was going to be a sarcoma. Um, and it went to a sarcoma surgeon who took it out and instead it was like a anticubital. So not a typical lymph node. I mean there are lymph nodes sometimes in the anticubital fossa but it's not a site where you think of a node um, right away. And it was a pretty big one like I don't know, four centimeters, five centimeters. It was a good size. And, um, and this is what it was. And we did molecular and it was Bartonella hensley. So pretty cool. And that was great news for that patient because easily uh, treatable and curable uh, disease. Cat scratch disease. All right.